Hello, I'm Dan from Edimo Electric Bikes and today we are going to do our full review of the Riesen Muller Multi Tinker. So this bike has just arrived in the UK literally a few days ago. I think this is probably the first one to land in the UK and hopefully the first one to get a full review as well. So uh, we've been really pushing to see if we can get this through for you. We've done a quick review of it. We've done a quick ride of it on a commute, which has been really good fun. And now this video is all about giving you all the detail about the options and accessories and everything that comes on this bike. So if you've enjoyed the videos that we've been making, the reviews and the adventure rides that we've been doing, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions or comments, then leave them down below in the comments section saying comments. So starting at the very front of the bike, you'll notice this bike um, is a 20 inch wheel. So it's a smaller wheel. Now it's called the Multi Tinker. And for those of you who have spent a lot of time looking at the Riesen Muller website, you'll know that they already have a bike called a Tinker with a 20 inch wheel on it. Riesen Muller have realized there's a gap in the market really to expand that Tinker and make a bike that is capable of carrying cargo um, or people, children, I guess more specifically. So they've created this multi Tinker. Uh, I guess it follows the same sort of format as their multi-charger. And the idea is, you can see across the back here, we've got a space for a couple of kids or some big bags and safety kit and everything that I'll come to in a minute. So it's a small wheel bike, a 20 inch wheel bike. And it's not like those um, folding bikes where the tires are really narrow. These are big bulbous tires. On this one, we've got um, Schwalbe Supermoto tires. So they're a very wide tire. This one's actually a road tire. Um, and what you can do is you can run the pressure a little bit lower if you want. Um, it won't be as efficient, but you'll be able to make the bike really, really comfortable. And because of that big tire, it feels really planted to the road. As standard on the Multi Tinker, we get that um, Schwalbe, Mo Schwalbe Super Moto X tire, but there is an option to upgrade to a GX pack like on a lot of the other bikes. And the GX pack essentially means that we add a knobbly tire onto it. I think the version that goes onto here is called the Smart Sam Plus. Um, so again, it's, a, it's quite an aggressive tire actually, but what it will allow you to do is then have a lot more confidence if you want to ride this bike off road. The really good news about that is that it means that we have to go and ride this off road at some point just to prove how good it possibly is or not. Um, so that's good news for us. Moving on a little bit further, as standard on um, most of the recent Muller bikes, you'll see we've got front and rear mud guards. So um, it's pretty much a given that this is going to be ridden for the commute, for riding to work. And um, so you don't really want water flying up and soaking you. You'll notice on this mud guard as well, there's an extension down the bottom as well. So it does make that really long because the part that tends to get really wet when you're riding in the rain is that your toes as, it part, as they pass the uh, front wheel or as you go through a puddle. So that extension on there is superb and hopefully it will help you keep your feet drier. So the fork that we got on the front of this one here is a SR Suntour Moby 34 fork. It's a sprung loaded fork rather than an air fork and it's got a um, lockout function on it. So when you're riding on a flat tarmac, you can lock this out for a smooth ride. Next little thing on the back here. This is um, a bit different to normal. So this is a cafe lock um, that is sitting on the front wheel here. On all the other Riesen Muller bikes, we would see that fixed to the rear wheel. But on this bike, because the rear wheel is pretty much covered in by um, the, the, the seats and the protectors and everything else, they've decided to fit that onto the front wheel. So this is an Abbas Shield uh, lock. Essentially, it's a bolt that goes through the wheel between the spokes and it stops the wheel turning. So the idea of a cafe lock is it just stops somebody jumping on and riding your bike away. It does have a, an extension that can plug into the side. So the extension is a, a long piece of cloth covered chain um, and you plug it into the side of the lock and then that would loop off around a lamppost or something so you can fix your bike to it. As standard, this lock here has the same key as the key for your um, battery. So they are keyed alike um, in the factory. Next feature moving up the bike is then the rack. So 
On this bike, this is an optional extra. So this is called a cargo rack. The cargo rack is the bigger, wider, sort of pushed out rack so you can strap things onto the front. So I've been using this on our um, recent ride that we did and I've had my laptop bag strapped onto the front here. Um, you can go for a standard rack um, on it, which is the shorter racks that will be on all the other bikes as well. And then you can have the option to have the front bag in it as well. So if you don't want to carry a lot on the front, maybe just a standard rack with a bag so you can grab things like mobile phones or um, sandwiches or maps or whatever you've got in, um, you're going to carry on the front of it. And then we get to the, the tinker type stuff that we've got. So. On the Tinker, um, it has the ability to adjust the handlebars, the position of it forwards and backwards, so the angle of the handlebars, and also the height of the handlebars as well. This multi-Tinker has exactly the same set of handlebars on it. So using um, this um, device that we've got on, on the stem here, we can lift the two levers up, and then we can adjust the handlebar into three different positions, which essentially mean that you, the bike's either gonna be reached away from you if you're a taller rider or pulled towards you if you're a smaller rider. And then there's another quick release um, on the shaft of the stem just there, and there you can release, re sorry, release the um, stem and you can lift it up so you can get your um, seating position higher again. So it means that this bike then be configured for any size rider, obviously in combination with the, sorry, the, the saddle and the height of that, anywhere from one meter 40 up to two meters, which I think is about four and a half foot up to six and a half foot. So this bike is then suitable for really anybody in the family um, to ride or anybody to share. So it's a, it's a really practical um, bike. There is only one frame size, so you don't have to worry about choosing different frame sizes or anything. It's, it is the classic one size fits all. Moving up onto the handlebars. So they come with Herman grips as standard. They're this sort of shaped grip that's on there. So it's nice and comfortable um, to hold. But as we move in, the next thing that's along is the Enviolo shifter. So on this bike, we've got an option of two different types of gears that we can go for. We can go for the standard um, touring specification, which is a Shimano Dior 10 speed um, gearing type option um, with a chain, a derailleur and a cassette. So classic sort of bike gears on it or if you pay about another 450 pounds, you can upgrade to have the Enviolo hub. And the Enviolo hub has the benefit of a belt drive and an um, internal rear hub that's completely sealed so that there's no maintenance on it at all. The way that you change the gear on the Enviolo hub is a little shifter here that you're gonna wind backwards and forwards to change gear. And there's a little um, diagram that changes of a person on a bike on a hill that either flattens or peaks as you go up and down it. So really cool little device. And if you go for the chain and cassette version, then you're looking at um, thumb finger um, trigger shift type gears that you're gonna get on it. Most important, obviously comes with a bell. Then we've got the screen that's on it. Now, this bike is our test bike here, available in Bristol or in Nailsworth for everybody to ride. Um, we specified it with the upgraded Kiox 300 display. As standard, this bike is gonna come with the Intuvia 100, which is an LCD display. That means it looks like a calculator type of display. So it's you know a monochrome um, display. It makes no difference to the performance of the bike, which screen you go for but there's no doubt that the Kiox 300 looks a bit nicer because it's an LED display, which means it's color, it's got the ability of putting little graphics on it um, and all sorts of um, nice bits and pieces. One of the other good features of it is in combination with um, a smartphone using the, um, the Flow app made by Bosch, you can actually have a very basic sat nav on uh, this device. Um, if it works the same, I haven't actually used it, but if it works the same as the other Kiox displays, it's quite amusing because it sticks a blue line um, in the center of the display that sort of swerves around for the corners that you've got to take, and you're an arrow that sits on that um, line. Um, and if you're not paying attention and you turn off the, the route in the wrong direction, which I seem to do every about sort of 10, 20 meters, um, then the blue line will disappear and you won't see it. You'll just see your arrow in the middle and then you have to ride back and go and try and find it or pick your phone out your pocket and look at the route on it. Um, so it's a basic sat nav that will work on here, but probably this type of bike is gonna be used for the, your commute. So it, you're pretty much gonna know where you're going anyway. So two different screen options, Intuvia 100 as standard, but a nice little upgrade is to go for the Kiox 300 that's on it. 
Now with the um, system here, when I've been saying Kiox 300 and Intuvia 100, they are actually part of the new Bosch smart system uh, that they've released. So it's two um, new displays that they're doing. And that also means there's a new, um, Ooh, well, it's called an LED remote on the left-hand side. It's the buttons that allow you to change the assistance level and also scroll through the screens and switch the bike on and off and also use the walk assist and switch the lights on and off and all those things. So that's called an LED remote on the side. It's really cool, uh, mainly because it's got lights and colors that flash and that, that's enough to amuse me. On the left-hand side, it has a little bar that goes up and down that will tell you the battery level that you've got. And then there's a little sort of a backward C shape um, on there that changes color depending on the um, assistance level that you're in. You can actually ride the bike without the screen on it at all. So it's a dumb screen if you like, so you can take that off and you can just ride the bike using the LED remote. So if you really hate looking at those types of things, chuck it in the hedge somewhere and just ride it with the um, LED remote. Tell us which head you chucked it in, I'll go and pick it up. Um, the other thing that's on this, which is really nice, um, is a standard feature that comes on the bike is the lights. So I missed on the front of it. The light on this bike is actually mounted on the front of the um, cargo rack that we've got there. So it's pushed out in front of you. It's mounted to the frame so the cargo rack doesn't move as you turn. So it's always looking out in front of you. Moving on to the main part of the frame, um, I think it's important here to talk about colorways on this bike. So um, Reese and Muller have been getting reasonably boring with their colors and they've gone for a lot of whites and um, matte blacks and grays and stuff like that. Um, and they've steered away from some of the other stuff like the curry mats and things they have. On this bike, they've gone for some really cool colors. So, and they've also gone for some boring ones, um, but they've gone for a couple of really cool colors. The first one is this, this is called um, Petrol blue. It's a gloss finish paint that is a really dark sort of blue color um, and it's slash black and that means that the front rack and the uh, rear rack here are painted in a matte black. Um, they also do it in a pearl white so if that's like the pearl white that was on the or is on the homage it's going to have a, a metallic um, color to it um, but it is a white and it is then again with the matte black front and rear. Then they do a utility grey matte, which is obviously a flat paint. It's a dark grey and it is paired with the black matte um, racks. So if you like the stealth look, then that's the one to go for. But I reckon probably one of the most popular bikes is going to be similar colourway to the Multicharger, which is to go for the utility grey matte with the curry matte racks on it. So then you get this front rack and this rear rack done in that curry matte, which is the same colour as a Supercharger. And everybody loves the curry matte Supercharger. Well, at least I do. <laughs> Maybe not everybody does it. Um, so th those are your four different colourways that you can go for. The bike has its battery stored in this down tube uh, that's here and because we've gone for the smart system on here we have got the 625 watt hour battery so I think standard starting sizes of battery for the smart system is maybe 545 watt hours which is what we see on the Tinker um, this is a bit of an upgrade to get a, I was going to say a decent sized battery. Um, the 545s are absolutely perfect for a commute, but maybe if you're carrying that extra weight and all the cargo, you know, the children and the bags and everything, you want a bit more capacity on your battery because you're likely to be using the higher power settings, so you're not going to get as far. So this is a 625 watt hour. If it's you on your own riding it, you're probably going to get about 60 miles out of it. If it's you fully laden with the kids, then imagine that you're going to get 30 to 40 miles out of it and you're not going to be shy using that turbo button that's in there as well. Moving backwards down the bike, um, this, um, I don't know if you can see here, but there's, there's, this is a, a canvas, um, well it's not canvas, I don't know what it's made of, but it's like a, a material um, sort of case that is hidden in the frame here between, sorry, behind the seat post and then sitting down below the, um, or between the chain stay and the seat stay and it takes up a great big space. Um, when we look at that in a minute, you'll see on the other side, there's actually two zips on that. So you can get in and then there's this big void that otherwise would have been completely redundant on this bike. So what Reese and Muller have done is they've designed this really clever little um, bag type comp compartment thing um, that you can put loads of stuff in. So 
on a bike, you're probably going to be carrying, you know, the boring stuff like your, your little toolkit, your puncture repairs, your pump and all of that. Um, obviously, you're going to be carrying your um, sandwiches, your phone, your wallet, all that type of stuff. It's a great space just to chuck stuff in there so it's out of the way. And the nice thing about the zips, there's two zips that go round, but when they come back round again, they click into a little padlock that's got a, a three-digit code on it. Now, it's not going to stop anybody with a pair of angle grinders or something who wants to get in it, but it just stops, you know, the kids walking past and going, oh, I wonder what's in there. So it's a really, really nice feature. It comes as standard on the bike, so you don't have to pay extra for it at all. Um, and it's a really cool use of that space. And it'd be nice to see them start to do it on some of the other bikes as well. So that's really cool. Looking at the, um, well, actually, before I talk about the chainring, just behind the chainring is the motor. Um, on this bike, this is fitted with a Bosch Smart System, which is a Gen 4 Performance CX motor with 85 Newton meters and 250 watts of power, putting out a peak of 540 Newton meters. Oh, yeah. just, just edit that. <laughs> this, so edit for Ben, that motor, has 540 watts of power, not newton meters. So the peak is 540 watts, 85 newton meters. Um, essentially, what all that means is that this is the most powerful Bosch motor that you can buy, and it's brilliant that they've put it on here because actually this bike is gonna be relatively heavy when it's loaded up with everything. So it's nice to see it's got the most powerful motor in there. And what you'll find is that when you then start to climb the hills um, with all that weight on, you just keep going, whack it into turbo and just get going. I've used it um, only probably, I've done about, I think 12, 13 miles on this bike in total so far, and it was relatively flat. I really didn't get out of the eco and tour um, setting that was in there. So I'll be keen to go and ride it off road and see how that, that motor really works out with it. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, sh I went in turbo the whole way, but nobody was going to know. <laughs> no, it's true. So there, there's actually a setting on this bike. So um, Bosch have done a recent update, and I think it's to do with the Tour Plus feature that they've put in. So instead of having um, assistance level that say um, Eco, Tour, Sport, or Turbo, and then, um, sorry, Eco, Tour, Sport EMTB and Turbo, there's a new setting in there in the place of Tor that is called Auto. So what I've done is I've put it into Auto and that means that the motor is going to cut down and save power wherever it can and whenever I want all the power it provides a load of power. Um, I pretty much rode it in Auto the whole time so I've never, no that's a lie, I did put it in Turbo. I've hardly ever put it into Turbo at all. <clears throat> in my eyes these bikes probably only have one setting and when I'm doing a commute that is about eight miles and I've got 60 miles of range on the bike, why am I going to try and get home with battery saved? I don't get any prizes for that at all so use Turbo whenever you fancy it. But having said that, when we went for our ride um, earlier this morning on this, it was about minus one, minus two when we started. So uh, Rufus and I were immediately putting the bikes in eco and making sure we had to do some work just to make sure we got really warm to start with because it was absolutely ice cold. Um, but I wouldn't normally do that. Um, looking at the front here, this chain ring. So when I did our really quick view of this as it came through the door, one of the things that we sort of realized was that actually that's quite a large chain ring on the front there compared to some of the other bikes that are out there. So I've done a little bit of research to find out exactly why that is. And what Reese and Muller have done is a really sensible thing, and I wish they'd done this before, is to realize that obviously if you put a bigger chain ring on the back, it's gonna be um, working out as a lower, smaller gearing, or sorry, a lower gear on the rear of the bike. That means essentially that when it comes to climbing the hills, it's gonna be easier. So when I've looked at the two different specifications that are available, the Touring or the Vario, normally the Touring with the chain cassette and derailleur would have a far lower gear than the Vario version and the Varios would be very high geared, not on this bike. So they've got this chain ring on here that's driven our gears all the way down. So this bike is now an absolute pleasure to ride. Um, so I wish they'd done that on more of the Vario bikes, but I guess most of the Varios are designed as sort of town use, very level sort of stuff. So you're not worried. This one obviously is gonna have weight on it. So we've gone for a big old chain ring. So tick in the box there for Reese and Muller. Looking at the pedals that we get standard on this, these are the pedals now that pretty much we're seeing on every single recent Muller that's coming through. 
It's a big flat pedal, nice and easy for riding when you're doing the commuting. You don't need any silly clipping pedals, uh, sorry, uh, clipping shoes or anything like that. It doesn't have the spikes in it that take chunks out of your shins. It's a very straightforward flat pedal with a sort of a sandy paper finish on there that gives you enough grip that you can just ride it like a normal bike. So um, pretty basic, but also um, very, very practical. Moving back up here, the seat post and the saddle. Now, this is one of the key places that um, on this bike, um, I think personally, uh, they've really missed a trick because on the Tinker, the, oh, sorry, the new Tinker 2 that's just come out, they've put a seat post on here, a suspension seat post that is a, a by Schultz, and I can't remember what it's called, but essentially um, it's like the old Cane Creek Thub Busters that they used to use, um, except it's got a spring in it and it's really, really soft. On this bike, uh, they decided to put a fixed seat post in here, so there's no additional suspension in there. They haven't even put a cane creek in there. I'm guessing it's probably because when you collapse that, it has movement and potentially you've got people sitting here behind with a little handlebar or something, all sensible stuff like that, which I'm not really that interested in. I just like the comfort. So if anything, that's the one thing I've missed. But when I was riding the bike, I wouldn't say it was uncomfortable at all. Um, you've got those big soft tires, you've got this really comfy saddle, so it's fine. I just like it, you know, if there's a bit of extra luxury, I'd like it. So uh, may maybe that would be a nice upgrade if they offer it in the future. The saddle, um, Cell Royale saddle, as usual with Reese and Muller, um, with at least 20 different um, brand names put on for it for all the different features. So this one is a Cell Royale. Um, Biotex cover look in with royal gel in it. Um, essentially, what it means, it's a comfy saddle. It's quite a wide saddle. Um, it's got plenty of give to it as well. Um, yeah, su superb saddle and Reese and Muller are great on the, the saddles they provide on pretty much all the bikes that you get a really good standard of saddle so you don't have to go and buy all sorts of big silly gel covers and stuff like that. And then the height. Um, nice little feature on these seat posts here. Because more than one person is going to be riding this bike, um, what you're going to find is that the first thing somebody's going to do is turn up and they're going to change your saddle height. You're going to go back and it's going to really annoy you because you can never remember quite where it was. On these seat posts, um, they've got markings with numbers on them. So all you need to do is remember uh, what you had your seat um, set up to. So when you go to it next, you can literally just drop it straight back into the same place and ride off again. So really simple, but a, a nice little thing to have on there. Okay, I'm going to move to the back of the bike now. Um, so now we're sort of pushing back down this way and this is where we can see the key feature of this bike. So multi-tinker, essentially it's a, a long-tailed cargo bike. Long tail means that what's happened is the centre of the rear wheel is here. Um, so we've pushed it back um, and there's normally like a, quite a big gap between the wheel and the um, seat post. So that's what a long tail is. The long tail means that you can then get the benefit of this extra space up on your, um, your rack on the rear and then you can start adding people, cargo bags, all sorts of stuff and carry a lot more than you would do on a normal bike. As standard on this bike, these um, foot plates come here. So that's gonna be on the bike, whatever you go for. And then your rear rack, which is this piece here, which will be painted a different color. Um, if you go for the um, utility gray and curry matte uh, version of it, um, can be upgraded. So you can have this cushion seat that sits on the top um, or you can have this bar and you can also have a set of handlebars. That's two different options. Essentially one is called a passenger kit. Passenger kit means cushion and then a little set of handlebars. Now that's suggested to be suitable for kids over seven, which is pretty general. I think it means kids of sort of age. So what, what's a seven year old about, about that? Somewhere, somewhere between that and I don't know how heavy they are, but one of them. Um, so if they're bigger than one of them, they can sit on there up to 65 kilograms. So in theory, you can have a relatively small adult sitting on the back there holding on to the um, handlebar kit or you can have a child sitting on there. If you decide to go for the safety kit, then you lose the little handlebar that attaches onto the seat post, and instead you get this safety bar that sits out around the back, and you get the cushion. So then you can have two kids up to age seven, size seven, those types of sort of kids, um, sitting in there, one behind the other, and then they've got something to hold on to as you're flying down those cycle tracks um, so that they, they feel a little bit more secure. 
One other option you can go for and read all the details on the Reese and Muller page, it gives all sorts of um, standards as to types of seats that you can fit, but we know a few of them, we can help you when you phone up. Um, you could go for a child sitting on the front here, and then you could go for another child in a child seat on the back. I think the maximum weight for the child seat on the back is, is a 10 kilograms, and then you've got 65 kilograms to play with in total, so squeeze them on however they'll fit. Looking at the, the bike, it comes with these as well, which are spoke protectors. They do two things. One, if you have got um, kids who are intent on putting their feet into the wheels, it's gonna stop them doing that. Um, but if you're decided that you're gonna carry um, pannier bags on there at all, then you might have loose straps hanging off and everything. This stops those straps going into the wheel. So they're gonna be on there as standard. And then this plate that I said here. So your plate is kind of, it's got two um, uses to it. One is for kids or adults to put their feet on. And the other one is if you're gonna carry a lot of luggage, so you've got rid of this and you're gonna carry a lot of luggage, you can sit it on here and rest, rest it up on the rack. So we get to carry a lot more weight on this bike. Uh, when we went out earlier, um, I thought it was wrong to go and approach somebody and ask if I could borrow their kids to ride into Bristol. So what we did instead was we loaded up all Rufus's um, film kit and we had all the bags stacked up in here, strapped in really dangerously because I wasn't very good at doing it up. Um, and then we had another pannier bag sat on the side and the weight was sat down on this rack. And the whole lot in there was actually really secure. So. I could have put loads more on. I had one of our standard, we, we tend to sell um, Valde Aquabac pannier bags, the 48 litre type things. Um, I, could have, I reckon I could have got two on there and then another two on the other side as well, plus then strap stuff over the top. So if you are thinking of going sort of touring, adventuring, and you want something really, really different, then you know this bike would be capable of doing that sort of thing as well. But I'm imagining in my head, predominantly the way that this bike is gonna be used is for people sitting out on the commuter belt wanting to drop their kids at nursery and then make their way into to work for the rest of the trip. So uh, I think that's probably the majority of what this is gonna be used for. Whilst we're talking about carrying weight and load, uh, an important feature down here is the, the stand on it. So most normal bikes will have a side stand that pop out um, to the side, obviously. Um, problem with that is it uh, means that the bike is leaning on that stand when, it, when you put it down. So it's not actually very stable when you start loading stuff up. So what you'll tend to see with recent Muller bikes, when they supply these um, kits with the safety bars or the passenger kits or whatever they are, um, they'll put something called a bipod stand on it. Now on the multi-chargers, they are two stands that pop out to the side. This is one stand or one piece of um, stand that flips up behind. But the idea of the bipod is it sits out both sides of the bike and it just makes it really stable. So when kids are climbing up on and off this bike, the bike's not gonna topple over. And when you're loading all your bags on it, you're not loading weight onto one stand that's gonna give way. So that's a, a good feature. It's sprung loaded as well. So you, as you sort of ride away, you're just gonna put your foot and kick it up behind you and then it's gonna be gone and it's not gonna be a problem anymore. <clears throat> Looking um, at the gears again, so this is probably gonna be the most popular option. This is called the, the Vario option. This bike is fitted with the Gates carbon belt drive on it. So there's no chain um, to connect to the rear wheel on this bike. And the benefits of not having a chain basically mean that you don't have to do the maintenance that comes with it. So with a chain, you would be looking at um, cleaning a chain, oiling it on a regular basis. And you would also be wanting to index the gears as well to make sure that as the um, derailleur moves between all the cogs, it moves cleanly and it doesn't sit halfway between and make that awful clicking noise the whole time which drives me around the bend. Um, I imagine if you went for the derailleur version, um, I think there's a bit of a cutout here, but it's still gonna be a bit of a faff um, to get in there. Um, and obviously you're gonna have the oil and stuff and sods law, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but um, sods law, um, you're gonna find that you're gonna turn up to work and you're gonna have oil up your leg. So going for the Vario version, which is about a 450 pound um, option, you get this Gates carbon belt drive and there's no maintenance to do and no oiling to do on it either. So that's gonna be clean the whole time. And um, when your bike does get cleaned on a weekly basis, obviously, um, all you're gonna do is you're gonna spray that down, wash it off with a bit of hot, hot and soapy, and it's gonna be ready to go again. 
because the, C, the hub on the back of the Vario, sorry, the, the Enviolo hub that's included in the Vario specification is completely sealed, it means that you don't need to do any maintenance on it at all. So it's really a, it's a simple uh, fit and forget type system. All you have to do is twist the little thing on the handlebars to change the gears. Going to the very back of the bike, um, as we mentioned before, there is, hidden in here there is a uh, mud guard to stop the mud flinging up. And then last of all, there's a little light on the back again. And both the lights are connected directly to the battery. So you can run those the whole time so that people can see you. Um, and they're great for both day and night use. So this bike falls into the category of a cargo bike um, and there's various different types of cargo bike that you can get and it's a big sector that Reese and Muller are moving, well moving into, they've been in it for a very long time actually. Um, you tend to get the front load cargo bikes and then you get the rear load cargo bikes like this. Um, front load cargo bikes end up with your all your cargo being pushed out into a big container out the front of you and for Reese and Muller you'd see that in the the load and the Paxter type models and um, for a lot of people that can be quite intimidating so um, your front wheel was suddenly pushed out in front of you away from your handlebars and it makes you nervous about immediately getting on and riding that bike downside of those front load cargo bikes is also that you can't um, put them onto a carrier on the back of a car or anything so all your riding must be done from home not too much of a problem if it's a commuter bike but it's, it's one of those things that's worth bearing in mind bikes like this so uh, long tail or rear load um, cargo bikes um, are far more like a normal bike to ride so the reason that this goes for a 20 inch wheel is it drops the center of gravity. So you find that then, because okay, um, cargo bikes that have big wheels like the multi-charger, um, when you load your kids up onto the top of that, the center of gravity is very high, so it becomes a little bit more unstable. Not a problem if you're loading up with bags and stuff, but maybe not so good for the kids. Um, with this type of bike, uh, where you're going to load your kids onto the back of it. Having the small wheel means that your center of gravity is an awful lot lower, which means the bike has less tendency to want to tip and fall the whole time. Um, and the other thing about having a rear um, cargo area on your bike is that this bike rides like a bike. So everybody who's ridden a normal bike is far more happy and quicker to adapt to being able to ride a bike like this. So I guess it brings in all the features of being able to carry endless cargo and you know rubbish that you would in your, your estate car. You can just pile it on the back here, um, but still having the benefit of riding like a normal bike. Delivery times on these bikes. So we are looking at relatively quick lead times at the moment. So first bikes are gonna be um, available. So this is a test bike. So first customer bikes are gonna be available in February. Um, so we're taking orders from them now. We specialize in doing factory orders of these bikes. So if you're gonna buy this bike, make sure you have it specified exactly how you want it. There's four different colorways. Um, don't go and buy the color you don't want. That's pointless. So tell us what color you want. Tell us what rack you want. Tell us what screen you want. Tell us what um, gears you want in the back. Tell us what accessories you want, um, what handlebar things you want for the passengers and everything. If you want pannier bags, let us know exactly the bike you would want because with a lead time of only three to four weeks, you might as well buy the bike that is for you. So these bikes, first one's available um, to the customers in February, which is pretty much immediately. Um, and then lead times after that of three to four weeks. So if you're interested in one, I would say, pick up the phone, give us a call, um, book in a test ride either in our Bristol showroom, which is in the paintworks just around the corner from Bristol Temple Meads, or come up to our Nailsworth showroom um, in the Cotswolds and come and have a ride on this bike, see what it's like, and then let us help you configure one, and then we'll get an order for you placed directly with the factory and get exactly the bike you want, not nearly the bike you wanted. So, if you would like to see exactly how this bike, I think, should be used, then um, click on one of the links on screen and you'll be able to see our commute that we've done into Bristol um, on a freezing cold morning from Nailsy and um, see how much fun we had and obviously see whether I fall off again.